first presentation is from Johannes Mann. Uh, it's about uh, he's going to present the result of the empirical study that compares micro string and JPG Java position API. Okay, thanks for um, introducing me. Uh, my name is Johannes and I have the pleasure to present a um, condensed version of Benedict's master thesis. Um, sadly, uh, he cannot be here today and I have the pleasure to give the talk. I want to start uh, with a bold claim of the tool we have looked at. So MicroStream is an in-memory um, storage engine um, and the bold claim is that they uh, can achieve 1000 times faster database queries compared to JPA. Um, and yeah, that's a claim from industry and we thought uh, why not uh, tackling this and writing a paper uh, out of this master thesis. So what I want to present today is um, I would assume that only a few people have heard of MicroStream beforehand, maybe it's countable on one hand, um, you heard of. Um, so quite interesting, and I want to share some insights why it is worth looking at it. Uh, then I want to answer another question, why another custom benchmark? Why is there a uh, the need for? Then our experimental setup. Um, the results, so we have basically two applications uh, used for benchmarking this storage engine. Um, the first one, this bookstore performance demo application is from the MicroStream vendors. Um, the application there has some um, drawbacks, uh, I will explain this. And then we implemented the TPCC compliant benchmark, a wholesale supplier. Um, with new technologies, so an object-oriented implementation. Uh, the last implementation was from uh, 207, um, and the goal there was um, looking at compound primary keys, etc. So not the state of the art where we are. Uh, and the last part is a bit of discussion: MicroStream versus JPA. Is this bold claim really true? Um, and maybe under which circumstances? then some concurrency best practices regret stability and as always conclusion in future work. So what is MicroStream? Only the bold um, parts are interesting, a Java native object graph persistence engine and they use a mechanism to serialize the Java object graph in a new um, specially designed uh, way. Then I repeated this claim uh, and they wrote on their website it's proven um, and I did not find who has proven this so we tried to do this in, in Benedict's uh, thesis and I want to have a short primer uh, already um, concurrency mechanisms so at the, at the beginning I thought the master's uh, thesis would be quite easy uh, the problem easy to solve but um, when you call uh, mechanisms to save uh, file storage, so when concurrently writing to a file you get an exception, when this is what you call um, concurrency mechanisms built in, um, then they have some, otherwise they have literally none. So that was a big problem. When looking at the typical tech stack uh, from an application, from a JPA based solution, only the red part is interesting, so we have this object relational mapping framework um, to get the objects into relations into the database. Um, 
All of you may know the impedance mismatch, so this costs time, performance, and what MicroStream um, did is they used the Java object graph without um, needing a mapper here, um, so they store the graph in their own custom format. Currently, it's really storing the data into files, or basically into one file. And the data storage uh, solutions they present, you can store your single file as a block in the database. They call it database management facility. I'm not sure about that. Um, another question to answer, why another uh, benchmark? So what we have seen is uh, the microstream application had some bugs. So we fixed during the master thesis some bugs from the vendor. Uh, that was really interesting. And then we tried to uh, repeat their performance experiments and prove their claim. So I will show some results later on. The problem with this application is it is vendor specific, obviously, and not standardized. So what I would do as a vendor to strengthen my positive points and you are know, not looking at maybe critical um, applications. What we did is um, a custom benchmark and we built this benchmark upon TPCC um, from 1992. As said, um, the idea back then was having a standardized relational model uh, for, ben for benchmarking these applications um, and we adapted this specification to an object-oriented model. Um, I want to shortly explain this table. So we have the two applications, this bookstore performance and the wholesale supplier. Uh, the bookstore performance from the vendor has an immutable data model, so basically they do not need concurrency uh, built in in their solution. They have immutable data, and the only thing they do is reading data. What we did, we implemented this wholesale supplier, and uh, as you could imagine, wholesale supplier has an immutable data model. Um, and what MicroStream offered is this JPA based implementation already and a microstream based implementation I call this MSYN uh, so syn synchronized version um, and what we had to use is some sort of transaction uh, manager or some mechanisms to control uh, consistent data and what we used that was the only adapter available back then um, Check is an open source framework for um, transaction, so an ACI store, atomicity, consistency, isolation. And the problem with Check is was that it was basically only applicable when using key value store, uh, key value data structures. So I have um, then a list of orders, a list of customers, and I as an application developer have to care that I relate the order to my customer. So I have basically no nested um, objects, and that's not really object oriented. Um, in the synchronization case, we use Java 1.0 uh, facilities, logs, synchronized keyword, um, and also come up with a few best practices. The experimental setup. So what's really crazy sometimes is when reading benchmarking papers, um, I think maybe 20% of the authors state um, the machines where the benchmarks are executed. That is really crazy. So I would assume it makes a huge difference using a Raspberry Pi or a C on Boy server, um, or should at least. Um, what we try to do is um, two bare metal machines in a small cluster as a question build. Um, our experimental machine was H90, um, so bad naming, um, historically bad naming, and the other machine was H50, so we used JMeter for submitting workload to our um, online uh, transactional processing application, 
and for getting metrics from the machines we use NetData. Uh, so the NetData data was not really interesting if I excluded it here. So it's stated in the paper. And for the JPA case, we obviously need a database. Um, what we tried to, so that was some um, design ideas to isolate this application as much as possible performance-wise to not introduce side effects and then to use JMeter for submitting the workload. So we had, in this case, 10 users in parallel doing sequential work. So obviously 10 terminal users getting uh, the index page, then doing some sorting, data inserts, whatever, uh, and 10 in parallel. And what we did, we measured the user perceived performance so the request response interaction as well as the server processing time. So how long did the service method uh, really executed? So that's basically it and now I have some results. Um, all the details are uh, uh, listed in the or stated in the paper. I want to show a few things. Um, so we had around about uh, seven to eight thousand requests. Um, one to seven are the seven transactions. And what we did is, um, so here is the median in milliseconds. Um, first for the JPA-based solution and then for the microstream solution. So this was, um, on top of this slide, um, this bookstore performance application from the microstream vendors. What we can see is in, for transaction six, there is really a speed up for over 400 times. Um, when looking into the functionality, we have complex joints in the JPA solution, and for the microstream solution, we access RAM. So that's a huge difference, obviously. The other transactions are only by a factor of tens faster. They are still faster, but not a thousand times. And this is really the processing time on the server. So wrapping the, the service method um, and yeah, logging the start and end time. In the other case, um, there is one, uh, one page in the paper where we put it, uh, some um, box plot statistics. Um, so the thing here is, it's again the median, we have three different implementations, so the first value is JPA, the next one is this um, crazy transaction um, service, open source, and the last one is um, our implementation with uh, low-level concurrency constructs. Um, the first row here is the server processing time, and this row is um, the user perceived time, and here we computed the slowdown or speed up. So in this case, the checklist version was uh, 10 times slower than the JPA solution. And in this case, the microstream solution was uh, 260 times faster um, than the JPA solution. What we can see here is that we also have a huge speed up when looking at the server processing time. What we also see is that around about 80 milliseconds um, are overhead, um, networking, um, whatever data serialization. Um, so this makes a huge impact. So we compare values here. In the JPA case, we need then 87 milliseconds. In the microstream case, we need 76. So that's basically only a speed up of 14% percent, not times. Um, so what we have seen in this mutable um, uh, application, the wholesale supplier, we have still an increase for um, some of our queries or some of our transactions, um, but we argue that the user perceived time is more interesting than having the server processing time. Um, does not help in many cases. So what we see, we for all transactions, we have a speed up when using MicroStream, but only 10 to 47% in this case. 
If you are interested in all the data, we are also there for the closed session tomorrow. The next uh, thing is, I want, want, uh, wanted to share with you are some insights here. So, um, this stock level transaction for this wholesale supplier um, application was quite interesting. So, in, uh, at the right, I implemented a map where I put the, the item as the item ID as a key, and then I have directly access um, uh, via via the map. In the other cases, I have to do complex joins and queries, and that's the reason why it is sometimes so slow. Um, so depend also dependent on the implementation, of course, uh, makes a huge difference. And for the microstream case, um, sometimes you can optimize using maps, etc. I thought it's good now to state research questions. Um, the three research questions I want to answer. The first one is, is the really a thousand times faster? Um, you already have seen no. Um, only when looking, in some cases, at the server processing time. And what was more interesting for me, so I, I lecture a bachelor course um, doing parallel programming in Java. Um, how can we achieve, achieve a concurrency control um, for a mutable data model? So how can we as developers do this? And the last one is potential usage scenarios, since uh, MicroStream claims to be the solution for microservices and serverless applications. So I skipped this slide, so I have two slides I can skip without losing any context. Um, what I want to show is this concurrency control, what we thought might be interesting. And we used, um, and that was quite cool, a structured entity relationship model from one of our professors. Um, and also um, SAP uses this uh, for modeling their database. Um, so basically the idea is giving um, the entity relationship uh, management um, a model um, a bit uh, semantic, so we have a structure here from left to right, we have left the independent objects and right the more dependent objects. Um, what we did here is when we nested logs um, for accessing data in a synchronized way, um, we derive the ordering of the logs from this um, domain model here. Um, and this helps us avoiding deadlocks, obviously. So that was quite helpful, otherwise I would assume uh, concurrency control is quite hard to achieve in this case, when we as developers have to care about. Um, what we, so only some aspects are interesting. What is quite interesting, so I performed concurrency uh, stress test, and what is quite interesting is that um, there is only one thread which is allowed writing uh, the database file, obviously. Uh, and when doing stress test and having a lot of uh, mutable data interaction, uh, the bottleneck is writing to the file. Uh, that was also quite interesting, so I looked at uh, my machine, one CPU was on my Quadco machine 100% utilized and the others were idle. Also not a, yeah, not a good marketing uh, claim for MicroStream. At the end I want to talk a bit about uh, usage uh, scenarios, so from the website they claim that Um, so they claim that it is the persistent solution for microservice and serverless Java functions. Um, and when looking at microservice principles, I would um, say that the decentralized data management principle works properly for this storage solution. Then, so good use cases, as already introduced by by MicroStream or um, immutable data models as their demo application and probably some use cases um, for cloud native apps where I have over most of my requests are read-only. Um, bad use cases 
or mutable uh, data models. Um, concurrency control is a big issue. Uh, they have no built-in support for that right now. Uh, and the tool is still, I think, five or six years old. Um, as a conclusion, I would say MicroStream is an alternative to Hibernate, uh, depending on what you want to achieve. Um, can boost performance in some use cases, um, but as always, it depends. Uh, thread stability are we used only data in, the, in RAM, so we have no uh, lazy loading of, ref, uh, of uh, references and data. Our custom benchmark application is not 100% objective. That's, that is always a threat here. And our experimental setup, so I want to execute this on different machines um, since what would be quite nice as future were to have some sort of bottleneck detection tool uh, for specific hardware configurations. That would be quite interesting. And thanks for the attention. And I think questions are maybe tomorrow. I think we can manage with one question if you have. Any question? Uh, yeah, I don't know.